Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. who are here present and those who were uh, virtually joining us during the day. And so for a moment, let's presence ourselves amid the presence of the God who is always present deep within us and all around us. For the Lord has gathered us together to praise him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And as we gather before the word of God this morning, let's reflect on the times and ways we don't, um, we don't allow the Lord to heal us by not recognizing the areas in our personal life and our society that need the healing touch of the Lord Jesus. And therefore, we don't allow him to come in and come into those to heal our experience, heal our experience and ask the Lord for the embrace of divine mercy. Holy God, you have created us as good in your sight, and you continue to reach out to heal us in the touch of Jesus for the ways in which we separate ourselves from one another and from you. And we ask your forgiveness as we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us unto life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, who sent St. Jerome Emiliani as a helper and father to orphans, grant through his intercession that we may preserve faithfully the spirit of adoption by which we are called and truly are your children. And we ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as our one God forever and ever. A reading from the, from the beginning of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth 
and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be light in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God sent them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, may the Lord be glad in his works. May, may the, the Lord, Lord be, glad be glad in, in his, his works. works. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. May the Lord be glad in his works. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean as with a garment, you covered it. Above the mountains, the water stood. May the Lord be glad in his works. You sent forth springs into the watercourses that went among the mountains. Beside them, the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches, they sent forth their song. May the Lord be glad in his works. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. May the Lord be glad in his works. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to the land of Genezareth, and they tied up there. And as they were leaving the boat, a pe people immediately recognized him, and they scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. In whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch only the tassel of his cloak, and as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. As we begin this fifth week of ordinary time, and it's not so ordinary, as we all know, but it's there, it's, it's beautiful. We begin the we kind of retelling the scripture. We're, we finish kind of doing the uh, letter to the Hebrews, which gets a little theologically strange sometimes, but it's wonderful. But then we get the wonderful story of God creating, this creator God who uh, didn't want to be alone and whatever the dynamic of inside the Trinitarian uh, Godhead, Godhead that we understand. But he wants to create beyond himself and not be a spirit just unto himself and begins to create in that beautiful story of Genesis in the beginning, which is, it's the wonderful, it's the first one, it's before the story of the, but him creating things so effortlessly, he speaks and it happens. This God who has an incredible power and creates things and separates things and so things work together. And we get the first four days and he keeps looking at it and he says, this is wonderful, this is good. You know, that all creation is good. We used to be sometimes be nervous about somehow in the world and create nature. And yet this, the, today even we look at nature as helps us understand our being because they're not as judgmental as human minds are. They just are what they are. And so you see, God, just beautiful. It's an artist. 
setting together the creation and the beauty. You know, yesterday and today, but yesterday is particularly here in Darien, it was amazing how beautiful it was. It was peaceful. It was Sunday. It had snowed again. Everything looked so beautiful. The snow, it was, it was gorgeous. It was alluring. It was frightening. It was foreboding because it was freezing. You know, it's like that attraction and that, that fear, and you just get involved in it. And yet it was gorgeous. I remember just sitting there sometimes, like, thank God, inside, looking out the window, but watching it. There was something just beautifully alluring about it, of God blanketing the creation in white. And it was wonderful. But we get this whole story of him creating life, and I think it's a beautiful piece. And he wants it all to fit together. And what's, what's beautiful about that first creation story in the book of Genesis is that everything works together. They're all interactive with each other. And who's going to feed what? And we know that. We know that, that nature, as we begin to explore it more, the interaction of things, of who seeds what, and who, you know, how interactive we are with it, how we're dependent on trees to create oxygen for us. And so it's a beautiful thing. And then you get, in the Mark story, it's an interesting parallel of Jesus. What's he doing there? Is Mark, in the Mark gospel, the first and the shortest of them all, <clears throat> but gets to the point, is he's a healer. He's constantly healing people. It's almost like in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, God is kind of rehealing the world. Because somehow sin is the issue of separating what God put together. And somehow we separate all this stuff. We isolate, we separate, we judge, we don't allow it to transform and interconnect with each other. And, and, and it creates sickness and stuff. And we isolate people, especially in those days, you know, they were foreboding, you were quarantined and everything else. And so but people are coming and he's responding. It's like a new creation is being formed. All the things you've separated, you've divided, you've excluded, bring it back. And that touch of Jesus, that healing. And we're a society that needs a lot of healing. You know, we've all gone through almost one year of this incredible pandemic that has kind of scared us, made us nervous at each other's presence, has separated the world. We've had a society that made judgments about who, who, who's worthy and who isn't, who should get this and who should get that. Uh, people have lost jobs, have lost their security, have lost their financial uh, kind of bearing to take care of their families. We have a society that's come apart. And then there's judgments about who's responsible to help them. And I think we have to look at that, this whole healing ministry of Jesus. But I think the real issue a lot of times, and I know we look at myself, is what do I not let Jesus touch in me? You know, I have hurts and disappointments and things that, uh, that kind of separate me from other people or separate me in my judgments or I separate them. And, and you've got to look at there. What do we, and we have to be honest about what I need personally and what our society needs and speak to that and help with that and participate in that. This healing ministry of Jesus, we who are the living Christ today, it's why we're here at Eucharist, to celebrate that we are what we eat, that we are the body and the blood of this Christ in this world. And how do we let it touch us? And do we reach out and even let him touch us? I know that's been hard. So then as I've sat and I know I'm, I'm, I'm a Sicilian and we have vengeance in our hearts and I know that. But one of the things you learn sometimes is sometimes I just rather fight it and feel bad and make myself the victim. And then suddenly say, Lord, I'm helpless before it. It's, it's shrinking me. And so I think is how do we accept individually, personally, the healing power of the Lord Jesus? As we even come here and celebrate Eucharist or wherever you're, 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 you're nurturing yourself today with the word of God that penetrates our heart, with the body and blood that we can celebrate in this sacrament, how much do we let it touch us? And how much does it therefore make us sensitive to what we need to touch in this world to put it all back together so God can smile and say, wow, this is good. This is really good. Thank you. As he invites us to cooperate with him, to be partners in the recreation and the healing of this world. But I think it has to start with all, each of us. And that's why we come before the word of God. And that's why we share in the body and blood to somehow allow God to do the work in and through us. Jesus promised that whenever we gather together in faith, Abba, our Father, would listen to us, and so let us pray. Let's first of all pray for peace in our world and wherever people suffer from the violence, injustice, and historic misunderstanding of others. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord. 
Let us pray for all those who are suffering from this pandemic, all those people who are medical and hospitals and in nursing homes and in senior homes are working uh, to be with them, for families who are, are, are kind of un unable to visit them because of the, the isolation, and for the development of uh, the vaccine and its equal distribution so that all of us can learn to be safe or feel safe in each other's presence, let us pray to the Lord. Let's gather together in our hearts and pray for those people who in any way need the healing power of the Lord Jesus, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, or relationally. For them, let us pray to the Lord. And let's pray for the members of the Little Flower Society and for all people who support the life and the ministries of the Carmelites here and throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray for ourselves that somehow that we are willing and able, humble enough to allow Jesus to touch the areas within us and within our society that truly need healing and reconnection and wholeness. Let us pray to the Lord. And in silence, let us pray for our own private and personal intentions. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and faithful God, thank you for always listening to us. And we ask you to continue to manifest your presence in our life by responding to the needs that we place here before you and those that lie unspoken and even unknown in the silence of our hearts. And we ask you this through Christ, our ever-present Lord. Through the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbles himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer fruit of the earth and vine and work of human hands, they will become for us our spiritual food and drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. And my sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Holy One, our God. O oh Lord, we bring you these sacrificial gifts to commemorate blessed Jerome and Miliani, humbly entreating that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation, and we ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. And make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we remember and give thanks that the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, that Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
And we remember and give thanks that in that same way, that before that supper was ended, that Jesus took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sin may be forgiven. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and the entire people that you claim as your own. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her strong and tender husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Therese, with Jerome Emiliani, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For we join in the sacrifice of Jesus, because we know, we believe, and we proclaim through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And inspired by divine teaching, let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from all evil and from all fear, from whatever prevents us from knowing you and from loving one another. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your peace so that we can live all of our days joyfully awaiting and experiencing the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. In Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered here, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Now let us safely offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin, darkness, and division of our world. And blessed are we who are called to this banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be
Let us pray. <coughs> o Lord, grant that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of Jerome Emiliani, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people, especially orphans. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all days of your life. And let's pray to Mary, our sister in faith. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As Mass has ended, let's go forth in peace and glorify the Lord by the way we live our lives.